Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here, how are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to New Music Finds where I like to break down all the different things that I've picked up over the past week. Get it from different places like my local record store but also online retail. Always get some stuff off of Amazon, go to eBay, places like that. Never know what you're gonna find and, and I like to dig through stuff and see what I can get. So I got a bunch of cool stuff here to run through with you guys. I've got, uh, let's see, I think 12 CDs and one box set for you guys, and we'll break it down here in just a bit. But before we start, if you're new to my channel and haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also, leave a comment, hit like. All those things do help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, turning on notifications is going to you know keep you up to date, and it's going to let you know when new videos post, just like this with new music finds, where I'm going through all bunch of you know cool stuff that I picked up so we're gonna kick off we're gonna dive right into it here and if you remember from last week um, I had shown you that I would picked up some new shirts and this is uh, my Judas Priest Screaming for Vengeance shirt from societies thesocieties.com you can head over to their website and check them out highly recommend it I love these shirts super soft and everything so Got one on this time going forward. I'm enjoying being able to wear these and show them to you guys as I go forward. I'd gotten six, so you're going to be seeing uh, me in some new shirts going forward in these videos. And for those of you that I know enjoy concert shirts like I do, um, I'm sure that's uh, be a cool thing to be checking out. So, okay, we're going to dive right in with new releases. And first one up, Motley Crue canceled in a jewel case. I couldn't believe it when I opened this. When I got the stuff. Uh, from Amazon and it came and I felt the packaging and none of them felt very thin like a cardboard case meaning just a uh, like an LP replica sleeve style kind of thing I thought something was wrong they didn't send the right thing and then I opened it and I could not believe a full-on jewel case and so not only is it that but the booklet in here is not just a single page or sleeve it actually has lyrics and photos and stuff inside it and how cool is that but i have done a full review of this it's only three tracks but i had a lot to say about it and i'm going to leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking it out but i gotta say all in all i like the song canceled i was kind of okay iffy on dogs of war and not really a fan of the beastie boys cover fight for your right that's on it but all in all I am very happy with it and it has restored my faith in the band a little bit after years and years of doing stuff that really didn't uh, uh, you know float my boat so to speak I'm kind of intrigued by this and I would love to hear an entire album how that would flesh out over time I feel like these one-off songs it's very hard to get a feel and if I could hear an entire album that, that could be in this newer style I might warm up to it more having uh, the peaks and valleys of an album and everything but basically by the time this is done and I'm only getting two original songs with a cover song I kind of throw the cover song aside because certainly they didn't write that so you know like I said I can't really dig my teeth into it all that well but very good and I would say for all crew heads out there definitely check out uh, the title track cancel on it for me that is the closest sounding or you know crew style song uh, that they've done in a long time all right I did pick up the new foreigner best of but uh, my copy arrived with a cut in the spine and bent so I am shipping it back to Amazon which is why it's unopened uh, but I held on to it until I get the new one and then I'll ship this one back um, it's sort of a very useless compilation, but I went ahead and picked it up for the one new song, Turning Back the Time, which was recorded in 1996. It was a leftover song, I think, from uh, the Mr. Moonlight album or that, you know, session. But um, there's uh, some cool stuff about it. There's a lot of single edits and r single remixes, things like that on here. And so I know the album versions inside and out. And this I was really intrigued by because as I was listening to it, I was saying, oh, that's different. I, I don't remember that. So it was kind of a cool listen for me as a diehard in that regard. The general public is not going to tell the difference between these. And then I also really like that they put some of the stuff from Kelly Hansen on here, like Can't Slow Down. 
uh, when it comes to love off of their great album can't slow down and the flame still burns which was released later on as part of um, I don't know one of their unplugged sessions or something like that so three tracks from the current singer along with uh, Lou Graham's material from the heyday and one new song albeit it goes from 96 and I do kind of wish that they had put that song in between the original era and the uh, new era of the band with Kelly Hansen. I don't like that we go from Lou Graham classic to new era back to Lou Graham, but that's just uh, me. I'm being nitpicky about it. All right, Neil Young and Crazy Horse reissue of Ragged Glory called Smell the Horse Edition, and it is because it is a two CD edition, although I know you can't really tell with, with that, but it does list Four extra tracks. Now, you don't get anything in here. There's absolutely no booklet. Um, and if you open it too wide, you can't close it back because the CDs fall into the in-between space. Um, but what I was trying to show you was no sleeve, no nothing, no booklet, no poster, no anything. This is the EP of the four songs, the regular album itself in here. Uh, so they did separate out the four bonus tracks um, I only knew one of those songs, Don't Spook the Horse, which was a B-side to Mansion on the Hill that I got at the time. And uh, But the other songs that are on here, they're all very long songs. They're cool songs. I'm kind of glad they didn't make the album. I don't really think that they quite fit with the album the way that the album is. I like that a lot, and I think it made it that much stronger. One of the songs I think is about a 13-minute plus song. All in all, 29 minutes for those four songs. So it makes a nice EP length add on to this. And even though I'm rebuying this album, which I already own, I am very glad to get that. It made it totally worthwhile as a standalone purchase because this was previously only available in a four CD box set that had Weld and Arc in it as well. And this, I just didn't want to shell out for that. So I was so glad to see them do this. I did not think that was going to happen. Um, so I was very, very shocked and surprised when it did. Okay, this is uh, one from a couple weeks back that I finally just got in the mail. Champlin Williams Freestead. And that is made up of three guys. So Bill Champlin from Chicago. Uh, we've got... Um, I'm drawing a complete blank on his name now. The Williams guys from Toto, and I'm opening the booklet here for Joseph Williams uh, from Toto. He's in here, and then Peter Freestead is also on here. And I don't believe he's from a particular band. I think he's just a multi-instrumentalist guy. Maybe he's got solo material or something like that. But the three of them came together. I, I'm guessing this is the third album since it is Cold Three. I have won the previous album of theirs. And um, yeah, man, if you like Chicago and you like Toto and you ever wanted to hear a mashup of that, that's exactly what this is. It's good stuff. And so far, I have to say, I think I'm actually liking this album better than the previous album. All right, now I talked about this one a couple times in my What Just Dropped series because it was due out, then pushed back, then finally got a release on September 27th. And we're talking about Van Steffensen, same pen, different voices. And I finally got my copy, and I have to say it has exceeded all expectations of what I could have imagined or hoped for. So never really knew a lot about this guy. Um, he had some stuff out back in the day. In fact, uh, one of the ones I'm going to, and I guess I'll just show it to you now, was I went ahead and picked up this China Girl release. And so this is a deluxe edition of, I think, his most popular album. Got the original album with some bonus content and then a whole second disc of, well, that's actually the first disc, whole second disc of uh, the bonus material there. But so I'll, I did pick that up and I have to say I'm not into that as much and I kind of understand why. It's definitely very 80s sounding uh, pop style stuff. But this guy was known for writing with a lot of artists and I didn't know it at the time, but later found out that he wrote with a band that I like called Giant on their second album, Fire to Burn. Um, Fire to Burn? Not sure if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, and uh, this album here gathers six of those songs, uh, some unreleased, some from that album, some demo session uh, type stuff. And they're on here along with a whole host of other artists. Now, the thing is, 
they weren't able to determine who a lot of these musicians are. So it's a lot of this is unknowns who are in here. Uh, we do have the lead singer of Strange Ways in here as well doing some stuff. And I think that was about it. Uh, maybe Faith Hill, if I'm not mistaken. I think she has something that's in here. Again, I could be wrong. I'm going to open this real quick and see. Um, who was the country artist in here? And it was Pam Tillis. Sorry, not Faith Hill. I don't know why I was thinking that name in there, but hey, they're both country artists. Anyway, my point being that this stuff sounds fantastic. And if you like late 80s, early 90s, AOR melodic rock stuff, the artists that were in here performing his material, for me at least, far exceeded anything I could have expected. In particular, track number seven on here, Modern Man. If you're able to check that track out, you'll know what this album is like. The first six on here are from the band Giant. That song, I don't know who it is. They don't know who it is, but I absolutely love that track. I love the vocalist. I would love to know who that band is. If anyone out there knows who is performing on Modern Man, and if that vocalist and band did other stuff, please let me know. And let the label know, man. I'd love for these guys to get some credit. So that was really cool. Uh, there's some other new stuff, and then I'll get into the um, older stuff that I picked up. But um, this, the Neverland Express featuring Caleb Johnson on vocals, a four-song live EP where they're doing Rocky Horror Picture Show material. So you're getting a science fiction double feature, Sweet Transvestite, Time Warp, and Hot Patootie Bless My Soul. And if you don't know who the Neverland Express are, they are Meat Loaf's backing band, continuing on essentially as a tribute group doing cool stuff like this, put out by Deco Records. And I didn't know this completely ran under the radar for me from 2023. They had done this, which is the called Paradise Found, and it is the Bat Out of Hell reimagined. And the musical director of the Neverland Express, which is Paul Crook, and he was actually a lead guitar player in Anthrax. Not that this material sounds anything like that, but that's where I knew him from long before he got involved with Meatloaf. But he talks about how these versions of the song and even these things that are here, the way that they are doing them is the way that Meatloaf did them live. And it was years and years of development and changes to these songs that led to the versions that are the way that Meatloaf liked them, which were different than the album versions. And so I think it's kind of cool to get new versions of these by essentially the tribute group doing them the way that Meatloaf liked hearing them when he was performing live. And it's got a bunch of the guys that used to back him up. And I got to say, whoever this Caleb Johnson guy is, which I think is an American Idol winner from season 13. I think that's what I read. I love his vocals, man. He sounds a lot like Meatloaf. It's enough difference that it's not a clone, but really has that same style of singing that Meatloaf did. And so these are great, man. I would totally buy an album of Caleb Johnson doing stuff. Uh, so I got to look into who he is and whether he's recorded anything, at least in a style that I would, would like it. And these were also released as reissues this past week, a band called Ram, and it's their first two releases. Uh, we've got the EP here, which originally was five songs, and then they added a bonus sixth track to it. And the debut studio album, this one was called Forced Entry. Uh, this one here called Sudden Impact, even though it um, doesn't, doesn't say the name anywhere. Yeah, on the original album cover, it doesn't say the name anywhere on it. Um, but apparently it was called Sudden Impact, and now it says so in the sleeve. But anyways, this is one of the newer uh, bands that is part of the new wave of traditional heavy metal. A lot of people compare them to Judas Priest. I was listening to this stuff again, and I don't really feel that as much, but they're definitely of that vein. Um, as I said, part of the new wave of traditional heavy metal. So newer band doing the stuff like the late 70s, early 80s era of heavy metal. Anyways, this band has continued on going and they got newer stuff out that I think is far superior. But these were two releases that I didn't have in my collection. So I added, I would recommend uh, their uh, second uh, studio album and the name escapes me at the moment. It's a white cover. It was also just reissued and that was the album I got into the band on and would recommend that before picking up these two, especially if none of the newer stuff is out there. All right. So last week I showed you guys the brand new Soul Asylum album, Slowly But Surely, and it didn't really gel with me very much. I have warmed up to it more, but one of you guys out there mentioned that Dan Murphy has 
uh, some other material besides gold and smog. I knew about that, but I never felt that that sounded like, um, oh my God, just totally space for a second. Soul Asylum. I never felt that gold and smog, which is really a super group, sounded like Soul Asylum. And somebody out there was kind enough to mention, and I apologize, I don't remember your name and or your YouTube uh, handle, but The Scarlet Goodbye. And I did a short on this, a one minute review. If you didn't already see that or check that out, take note of this right now. This is called Hope's Eternal. And I love this way more than I love the new Soul Asylum. For me, this is what Soul Asylum has been missing on the last couple of releases. Not that I didn't enjoy it. I actually really liked the previous album. This one definitely goes back to their early 90s era sound, and that's part and parcel to Steve Jordan coming back in and producing them, who did And the Horse They Rode In On, and I get that. But I gotta say that this album here clicked with me. I'm loving the guitar playing on this, the vocals, just everything about it sounds like what I love about Soul Asylum, at least that 90s era stuff, the later 90s era stuff that they did starting in 93 with Grave Dancers Union and going forward and stuff like that. So um, I, I say just check it out in general, but if you're a Soul Asylum fan and have never checked this out, but wondered where, uh, you know, guitar player, um, Dan, oh, Jesus, I'm totally spacing on people's names and things today. And now I'm having to look at the back of this. And I already mentioned the guy's name, but um, Dan Murphy, gee whiz, occurs. Well, for those of you that don't know, I'm shooting this very early on a Sunday morning. And so I'm not really all awake. And if you didn't know that about my videos, I wake up very early, shoot them in the morning. And it just goes to show sometimes I need to wake up. I don't drink coffee either. So that probably tells you a lot about uh, my nature and mindset very early on when I'm doing these. And so if I draw blanks on things like I did twice in the middle of this particular review here, that's why. But hey, you know, what are you going to do? Check that release out, The Scarlet Goodbye. I do recommend it. All right. So I, for whatever reason, dug deep into Leonard Skinner over the past week and was really enjoying their stuff. And I already own the two albums that the Rosington Collins Band did. They've not been reissued independently. I've got them as a twofer on the BGO label. I'm glad to have them. There is sort of a best of their material that is put out by um, Leonard Skinner under the name Solo Flights, but they didn't have just a best of release until I dug in and I found this, the Millennium Collection. And so this came out in like 2001 or so, and it features five tracks each from their two albums, plus then it has a song from the Alan Collins Band and a song from the Rosington Band. And I thought that's perfect for me. Now I can really just kind of tune in to what was considered the hits or the notable tracks and kind of get to understand this band a little bit better. And that's why I will pick things up like that for when I just want to throw on a best of neither album one, album two, because I didn't grow up with those albums. So they don't hold any sort of nostalgic memories for me of, oh, that was the hit. I remember hearing it on the radio, that kind of stuff. And sometimes when I don't have that, I find it really hard to invest myself into it. While I still enjoy listening to the albums, I want to be more invested. And for me, at least, that's one of the ways that I like to do it through best of collections where I can listen to what was called the hits uh, from an album and go, oh, okay. Now when I re-listen to those after listening to this a bunch of times, I have a new take on it. And in particular, one of the tracks, Pine Box, which is an acapella song that is done on the second album. And I never liked it. And then that just always kind of drove me nuts in the flow of the album. After listening to it a bunch of times in the middle of this, I have a new appreciation for it now. And I'm actually learning to like it a lot. So when I go back to that album, I'm going to feel entirely different about it than the way I have felt for probably the last decade or longer since having that two for album collection. So... I know a lot of you guys always asking, why do I buy best ofs when I own the full length albums? And I have explained this before, but I really wanted to give that explanation as part of that. Okay, now this goes back a ways, but I picked up probably two months back, give or take, uh, the Fanny album, Charity Ball. This was their second album. They're an all female 70s rock group, one of the first. They were signed in 69. 
and um, wrote all their own material and stuff like that. But about three days after buying this, I found out that Cherry Red Records was going to release a box set of their first four albums on CD. And now it's just taken that long for me to get it, but I finally have it, and I'm so glad that I, I do. And of course, that means I'm replacing this Reprice Records reissue with my trusty CD box set that'll go up on my shelf there with all the other cool clam shells. But four CDs featuring 36 previously unreleased, um, well, I don't know previously unreleased, but let's call them bonus tracks. 36 bonus tracks on here spread across the four CDs. So I think two of them have eight bonus tracks and two of them have 10 bonus tracks on it. But all in all, making it really worthwhile, plus a 26 page booklet in here, totally makes it worthwhile. This, this box set was only 42 bucks on Amazon when I last checked. So uh, definitely worth checking out if you have any interest in this group. And their notoriety, while being one of the first all-female rock groups, they aren't the first, but they were the first all-female rock group to release a full-length album. The other two bands that came before them only released singles, and so definitely uh, that's why a lot of people think Fanny are the first all-female rock band, but it's really just they were the first to put out a full-length album and continue to have notoriety thereafter. But all in all, um, I did do a full review of this and at the time of posting this video, because as I just mentioned to you guys, I'm filming on Sunday morning, but I don't post this till Wednesdays. I don't know if this has gone up or not. Uh, if it has, the link will be in the uh, description. But if not, keep an eye out for that because uh, this, there's a very cool history behind this group and the box and what's contained within here that um, I ended up going and deciding to make a whole little review of this thing for you guys. And all in all, man, there you go. 12 CDs and one box set. I hope you enjoyed this video despite me having a couple uh, brain farts in there and uh, not being able to remember a couple names and things like that. But hey, this is live, done in one take, and that's that's what you get uh, when that happens. All in all, again, hope you enjoyed it. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.